Imagine you have landed on an alien planet and you see this. The floor is covered in soft green spikes. Well, they might be spikes. Don't know. Haven't impaled myself on them yet. How can you tell whether it's safe to walk on? No. If you think an organism is safe just because it's not moving, you clearly haven't met any ambush predators like the monkfish or the stonefish, which has one of the most potent venoms on Earth. Your biggest clue, then, is that there is lots of this green stuff. This means it's probably autotrophic. That is, it does not eat other organisms. Your best chance of survival in an alien jungle, then, is ecology. Ecology is the study of ecosystems, dynamic systems of interactions between the environment and living things. An ecosystem is highly constrained by its environment and must conform to a set of well-known and inevitable principles. That makes ecology our best chance of understanding alien life. The most important thing to understand about ecology is that all life relies on a flow of energy. Life uses the energy to build and maintain complexity. Therefore, wherever you find a good enough source of energy, you will probably find life. Uh, probably. Every ecosystem relies on the source of energy, which can be sunlight, chemical reactions, even radiation. You can't rule anything out at this time. This energy feeds the first trophic level, known as the producers. Trophic comes from the Greek for food. On our planet, the producers are usually plants using sunlight. The energy stored in the first trophic level then passes to a second trophic level, the consumers. You can then have another trophic level, that is higher up consumers that peeling on those consumers, and you can even have another trophic level after that if you want. This is called the trophic pyramid, and it's a pretty good way of describing an ecosystem. This pyramid must follow a set of five rules, which should describe all ecosystems across the whole universe. Rule one, the ecosystem is driven by an energy input. This input constrains the complexity of the ecosystem, conservation of energy and all that. Rule two, the energy within each trophic level must be an order of magnitude lower than that of the trophic level beneath it, because energy is lost due to respiration and heat. On Earth, typically 90% of energy is wasted by each trophic level. This is due to the second law of thermodynamics. No energy transfer can be 100% efficient. Rule three, because of this inefficiency, there must be recycling of material throughout. This cycle is closed by a group of organisms called decomposers. In other words, the trophic pyramid is more of a cycle. Rule four, there can be no more than five trophic levels because by that point, not enough energy is available to form a next level. This is the shakiest rule, to be honest. We might find six levels out there. Who knows? Not me. Rule 5. Temporal and spatial cycles must result from these cycles of energy, driven by external factors like nights, tides and seasons, or internal factors like circadian rhythms. Biochemical cycles will let you detect life on other planets from afar if you're clever. The most important rule is Rule 2, because it will save your life if you find yourself on an alien planet. The inefficient energy transfer between trophic levels tends to mean that organisms at the first trophic level have the largest populations. If this wasn't the case, the creatures that feed on these producers would quickly run out of food. Importantly, the first trophic level has no interest in you. Hang on a minute. What about plants with thorns or stings to protect themselves from herbivores? They're certainly not homeless. Unless you're wearing gauzing gloves or something. Right, yeah. The important thing to note is that these plants use either visible deterrent, by which I mean spikes, or defences triggered only if you try to eat them, like poisons. As long as you look carefully, you'll probably be okay. Don't touch anything you don't need to. Also, note that there tends to be not as many, say, holly plants, as there are, say, grass plants. So now you know how to identify alien producers and alien consumers. The next question, then, is how do you identify different types of alien consumers? How do you tell the sheep from the wolf in sheep's clothing? I'll cover this in the next video.